temperate maritime climate means the British winter is never short of rain. But when the sun comes out, London appears in all its magnificence once again. The city today has a population of close to nine million. They come from around the world and speak more than 300 languages, sharing the inclusiveness of this cosmopolitan metropolis. 82-year-old Professor Martin Arbro is a sociologist. In more than half a century, he has been focusing on international issues like globalization. I work on issues connected with the future of human society, global society, globalization, and I like to think that I can contribute to making the world a better place. In his academic field, Professor Albro is known as the pioneer of the globalization theory. In the 1990s, he wrote The Global Age, State and Society Beyond Modernity, establishing his leading position in globalization studies. He served as president of the British Sociological Association and was founding editor of International Sociology, a prestigious international journal. Although retired, Martin has never given up his interest in global issues. In the panic that followed Lehman's bankruptcy, the worst of the financial crisis was just getting started. Of the recession that followed, housing prices started to fall. But we'll keep going bigger and bigger. It's been more than 20 years since globalization theory was introduced to the world, which has since seen many massive changes. Martin feels these give a new perspective to his research. I think we're, we're in a more dangerous place, the world. Uh, than it has been for quite some time. Uh, and, and one of the reasons is uh, globalization, because what globalization, in particular economic globalization does, is it puts strains upon every national economy. And in particular, it increases inequality. In April 2015, a promotion for the book Xi Jinping, The Governance of China, was held in London. Martin was invited to speak at the event. Reading the book, Martin learned about the BRI for the first time. I think it was probably a year or so before I really focused on it and thought, this is something interesting. And then, obviously, reading his speeches, you realized, wow, this is important. After the event, Martin started a new research project, a comparative study on globalization and the Belt and Road Initiative, based on Xi Jinping's book. There are many, many criticisms of Belt and Road from, from different quarters, but they all are, they are all the product of fear. They're all the product of the sense that the world order is changing, that the West has lost its domination. That objection arises out of the tensions in the West, which are the result of globalization. It's not the result of Belt and Road. As I say, Belt and Road is actually different from globalization. It uses globalization. During his research, Martin met with many visiting scholars from China. He would often invite them to visit Crystal Palace Park in South London. This is one of the most iconic places in the history of globalization mm -hmm. because in 1851, the Great Exhibition was held in Hyde Park in the middle of London. But the spirit of Crystal Palace was a spirit of globalization. It was like a continuation of the Silk Road. Mm -hmm. And now we have Belton Road and the spirit of the Silk Road is in Belton Road. Mm -hmm. So this is the continuation of a global history. Professor Albro began his new project in 2016. At the age of 79, he started learning Chinese and reading a great many books. It was he who argued that the peasantry, the Chinese peasantry, ought to have the advantage of growing crops for themselves and benefiting from that as well as contributing to the communal pot. Over the following two years, Martin interacted with scholars from many different fields, drawing inspiration from the clashes of ideas. 
he published his conclusions in a monograph, China's role in a shared human future towards theory for global leadership. On April 15, 2018, a book launch took place at the London Book Fair for Martin's new volume. The book has 14 chapters, the first four of which elaborate on Albro's interpretations of the Belt and Road Initiative. In his book, Martin argues that the Belt and Road Initiative is more a philosophy of history than a program of action. He also writes, the Belt and Road Initiative is showing the world a preeminently practical way forward with the greatest chance of significant progress in achieving them at the present time. I do think that one of the most important ways of approaching contemporary global problems is to treat them in terms of projects and goals. And, and this is what One Belt, One Road does. There is, though, a lesson, I think, for beyond One Belt, One Road for global governance. And global governance, to my mind, should be concerned with the major global issues which confront humankind. After the book was published, Professor Albro continued with his sociological studies. Whenever asked about his opinion about the BRI, he answers with words to this effect. When you talk about a shared human future, you talk about the things that we can do together in the future, not a future where we're all the same. 